Today, in two series of experiments, we will study what happens if we change the DC polarity of a Corbino disc, that's two conductive tubes, with 40 kilovolt of DC power between them, when ionized argon gas is going through the tubes in between them, there's a tube leading to our argon cylinder. Now we only get an arc if we do that by itself, but if we place it inside of this ring of permanent magnets, then the ions spin quite nicely, which is called the Corbino effect. In other words, if we place that Corbino disc with argon gas going through it inside of this axial and radial magnetic field, then we get an electric arc which will spin very rapidly. Just to show you how that works, I've turned on the argon gas and DC electrical power with the magnets outside and you can see the gas is spinning inside very rapidly. Now the question we will be studying today is whether we can change the DC polarity of that Corbino disc, say from plus minus to minus plus, or other variations, so as to make the argon ions eject with propulsion and thrust like for a space drive. We have several different variations planned. Let's go ahead and do the experiments to see what happens. We start from a case where the argon ions are inside on the minus electrode and the electrons are outside on the plus electrodes and then quickly switch all three electrodes from plus minus plus to minus plus minus. Then all of these ions will move in certain directions. First they'll all be ejected outward by three big arrows by electrostatic repulsion. Secondly the argon ions will go outside to the negative charges and the electrons will go inside to the positive charge. So let's actually watch that in practice to see what happens. Today we will study switching of electrical DC polarity with the Corbino disc surrounded by a ring of permanent magnets. Argon ions outside. Argon ions inside. Argon ions outside. Argon ions inside. Argon ions outside. Argon ions inside. How can we know whether argon ions are being ejected in either DC polarity? Well, I've turned up the flow rate to get more gas. And you can see a big cone of gas around the top of the electrode when argon ions are outside. There's a blue ring. And a little bit of warmth. When I switch them back to the inside, covering the electrode, you can see quite a lot of gas there, and it's really quite hot putting your hand there. Big increase in temperature. So it's possible they're being ejected a little bit in both orientations. However, the argon out orientation here seems to be a bit cooler and the inner orientation here, where they all cover the electrode. In our first series of experiments today, we studied what happens if we change the DC polarity of a Corbino disc while ionizable argon gas is going through it. If we start from a case with argon ions on the inside, plus, minus, plus, and then we change it to minus plus minus the electrodes of the Corbino disc. We'll get electrostatic repulsion of all three particles outward as shown by the three arrows. Plus the argon ions will move outside and the electrons move inside. We seem to have seen all of those three phenomena in the videos just shown. Now there's another case. What happens if we start with the argon ions inside and we only change one electrode? We're going to go from plus minus plus to triple plus. Now a lot of those competing phenomena will be eliminated. The electrons won't be accelerated outward. Only the argon gas will shoot outward while electrons come in to fill the space behind them being attracted to the plus charge. Now to start we have the argon ions inside, black inside, red outside with permanent magnets around in this Corvino disk. 
Now we're going to add a switch here, and we're going to hand switch it quickly to red, 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 and they go back again. Now when we flip the polarity of that Corbino disc with argon ions inside to triple red, how can we tell if the argon ions are being ejected? With the flame wall you can feel quite a strong wave of heat here on your hand. When I turn it off for triple black, that goes away. Invisibly, you can feel the flame here once again. John Matt is unusual and important because. Now when providing DC power for these experiments, I took eight ignition coils wired in parallel, each 15 volts, about one amp. And then at the base of these, I've got a capacitor of 100 volts for stability, electrolytic, because we have to avoid ripple in the power. It needs to be very stable. Also, I've put two diodes there and there so that there'll be no reverse power coming from the device which might damage these ignition coils. Having this capacitor is very important for stability of, and you can see those are real UFOs, three big capacitors at the base where ions go and spin around so they provide a lot of stability of DC power. There's a similar crop picture which is essential for the Cabino disc which is in here to spin well. As a final note, we won't expect to see the blue fluorescent color of argon out here as the argon ions go outward because they recombine with electrons and become colorless. We can only see it when there's still argon plus. If they recombine with electrons and escape to give heat, we can't see that. We can only feel the heat coming off.